All right, hey guys, it's Teapot back for another video. I'm really excited to be here at the National. My first time at the National. Also really excited to finally get to meet our project manager, Leon, in person. Leon lives out west and uh, it's been remote all up until now, so really excited. He's gonna help me look for some, uh, some different deals here at the show. Yeah, let's do it, excited. Leon, last week, Saturday, we released a video. I was talking about different cards I'm looking for here at the National. Obviously, we, you know, we see a little bit of everything. You can spend money like, like mad. Uh, right now, I want to focus on baseball. You know, I think there's some opportunity with baseball. I don't have a lot of baseball stuff in my portfolio. I kind of want to re-up. So I'm going to go at this a few different ways. I'm not going to like overly fixate because what we saw yesterday looking for the Ichiro stuff is like, Whoa, you can kind of, yeah. yeah. I just want to sort of broaden my net a little bit today and, you know, think about current players, potential Hall of Famers, and maybe a few Hall of Famers. So I've got a list here I've put together, and uh, this is my kind of target list of guys. So Ronald Acuna, um, I already have a hot box purple refractor of Acuna. I'm looking for something maybe like this, just his Topps Chrome refractor is something I'm looking for. I think this is a really sharp card. Uh, Nolan Arenado, uh, Manny Machado. So both of those guys, uh, you know, higher on the war list, good chance of making the Hall of Fame eventually. Um, Jordan Alvarez and Bo Bichette are two guys that I talked about in the video last week. Young guys that I'm targeting, their, their prices High are ceilings. down a little bit. Yep. I have seen Bichette stuff, people are asking a little bit higher here, so it might be tough to find something you know kind of reasonable, his stuff's starting to, to tick back up. And then uh, Paul Goldschmidt, Joey Votto, two of my favorite first basemen since I started doing fantasy baseball. Both of them have a pretty good shot, I think Votto for sure has a good shot, Goldschmidt's kind of coming up a little bit later, and um, I think Votto just, just I don't know, not set a record, but he hits, he's hit six, uh, six home runs in his last five games. He's starting to turn it on. He's been struggling this year, but I heard he was the oldest player since Barry Bonds to have six homers in five games. So kind of a cool little tidbit. Impressive. And then, um, uh, let's see, Rafael Devers is another young guy that I'm looking for. And then um, Yachty or Molina. I'd love to find a Yachty card. I'm a big Yachty fan. And uh, you know, some of his stuff is actually pretty expensive. His war, interestingly, is, is lower, but I feel like catchers kind of get a different break when they're looking at evaluating them for the Hall of Fame. Right. And then um, Evan Longoria. You know, that I guy's, saw Longoria on there, man, that's awesome. He's, yeah, not Eva, uh, Evan. <laughs> he's, been, uh, he's been doing it you know, for a while, but he's having kind of a nice resurgence this year, and he's doing pretty well. So what I did was I, yesterday I was doing a little bit of research, and uh, I kind of pulled up the active leader list of uh, war. war leaders. You know, Pujols at the top, 99. Maybe explain um, war to our, our viewers that might not be super War is wins above replacement. Yep. I can't tell you the calculation because it's crazy, <laughs> but it's one of the you know biggest metrics that's used to determine Hall of Fame eligibility. It's one that big you know baseball statisticians are into. Kind of a polarizing stat to be honest. Yep. On the Market Movers videos, you'll hear me a lot you know talk about the, the conventional stats, runs, batting average, slugging, RBIs. But war is another really important statistic, and it is one that gets talked about a lot when it comes to Hall of Fame consideration. Even to that point, uh, on, there's this article here on secsports.com. It's from about six months ago, but they did a really nice job kind of going through and breaking down the top 40 players sort of on the trajectory for the Hall of Fame. And they did a, a breakdown of the locks, which is your poo holes, and others, the Votto group, they called it, on the right path. And then sky is the limit is kind of like the young, like, you know, superstars. And there's an interesting piece in here where they say, you know, as a general guide, a 70 war or higher is a strong Hall of Fame candidate. Like I said, Pujols is at 99. He's, yeah, yeah. he's a total lock. Uh, 60 is borderline. 50 gets you into the discussion. So this, the nice thing about this list is they show you their age and they show you how many years they've been in the league. So you can start to kind of extrapolate and go, okay, if this guy's 28, there he's got a, a war of yeah. 22, maybe he's got 10 years left in the league, how much more is he going to get? So I'm just trying to try and evaluate. That's how I put my, put my list together. Ooh, Freddie Freeman's another one, actually, that I forgot to put on my list. Who uh, I might be looking for a no nice card from. No Buster Posey. Um, you know, if there's a Posey at the right price, but um, if I had to pick between him and Molina, I'm going to go with Molina in terms of catchers. So my list is a little disorganized, but we're going to walk around and see what we can find. All right. So one thing I'm, you know, kind of looking at. You see vintage baseball. Sometimes they have, you know, more modern stuff. But uh, just quick eyeballing different stands, looking for obviously more current stuff than that. I do like vintage, but. When it comes down to it, you only have so many dollars, and exactly. right now I'm, I'm looking for more modern stuff. So, looks like they've got uh, basketball here. Oh, 
I'm going to have a hard time not being distracted by a gold Giannis, but that's not why we're here. I get a little bit of like squirrel brain distraction here walking around and looking, but um, that's hard. we got the loot box guys here. Not sure if we're going to have a break done with uh, Jeff, but um, nice to meet you guys in person. Nice see you. Hey. Jeff, and, you're going uh, down. <laughs> so we're focusing on baseball today. Just looking for like some baseball rookies. I got a little target list. Leon's helping me look. So, so what, what baseball rookies you guys are interested in? Not Quite a few. Like uh, Acuna, Nolan Arenado. I like to you know kind of target guys that I'm a, personally a fan of, and also kind of you know have an investment purpose. That way, if their cards go down, you're not as heartbroken or devastated when they're yeah, when the prices go down. I do like the, uh, the Fernando Tatis finest. But it's an insert, you know, kind of rookie card back there in the top row, the 450. It's one thing I really like to do is, if you pick up a few rookie cards of players, in terms of my PC, I don't tend to collect like kind of the common rookie cards. I like the more unique stuff like that. But it's kind of cool if what you can do is buy two or three, eventually, you know, kind of flip your way into owning the other one with house money. All right, we're gonna keep walking. A Rod, I know uh, A Rod for a while was a buy, actually. I'll look these I don't know if we have the uh, wave of the future in market movers yet but one of the things we've been trying to do is get more 90s cards in there's there's so many good options of cards to add into the database um, you know it can be tough to tough to prioritize certain ones I'll kind of check and see what this has been going for lately so BGS 9 oh that's a BGS 10 for 300 PSA 10 168 low pop had a BGS 9.5 go for 44. That seems really low to me. This is a super cool card. The Leaf Limited. So I'm kind of trying to stay. I mean, I don't, I don't necessarily have a hard limit on a card, on the cards, but I don't want to like blow my budget all on one card either. That's true. Yeah, the second day over here. I'm, I'm not, uh, I'm not rolling with tens of thousands here. I'm, I'm looking for cards kind of in the 100, 200, maybe 300 dollar range. Mike Stanton, man. Talk about a guy who valued in a ridiculously yeah. amazing season a few years ago, and then right. he just can't stay healthy. And then Somebody's we kind of have the continuation of that in this case with your Glaber Torres. Yeah, Glaber. He's he's turning it on lately too. But we, not a good start to the season. Not right? not at all. <laughs> and so this is nice when they have a banner that clearly says what they have: 50s and 60s baseball. So it makes it easy. I mean, unfortunately for them, that's not what we're looking for right now, but. Base, no, football, football, football. You gotta like play the, play the high, yeah. Out of that 20 cards that you did in your video, yeah. what, are you, what are you searching for? Right now I'm actually looking for Bichette and Jordan. Bichette and Jordan? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll show, you my, I'll show you my target yeah. target list right now, just some baseball guys. Future Hall of Famers, some current Hall of Famers, you know. Yeah, see, I'm, some young I'm guys. going for like Cabrera, Votto. Yeah. Hard to find them. Yeah, I know. Yeah, two guys I want to ask you about, uh, Kyle Lowry and Dwight Howard. Well, if Lowry gets traded to the Lakers, like the rumors are, I mean, you got to expect that, if, especially if he wins a title with them, or even just the buzz throughout the season if they're playing well, I would think his stuff would go up. Here we go. Uh oh, we got a small. Forever. A couple of Bichette. The Grom. Got the yellow, the purple, the Meyer exclusive purple. Meyer grocery store where I'm from. A lot of Bichette. A lot of uh, and a showcase of Jordan here. Pretty much an entire case of Jordan over there, actually. Yeah. You guys do a hundred on the Bichette on the PSA nine. Yeah. Why say no when yes feels so good? That's true. Like one ten. Uh, I'm pretty firm on a hundred. If you'll do that, I'm I'm willing. But. You got boss. Cool. How you good? All right, a couple nice uh, Vladdies here. I wasn't in particular like looking for Vlad, but I do believe in him long term. I have a an Acuna PSA nine on the purple uh, hot box refractors. Now, these ones aren't numbered in Heritage. Heritage has regular refractors that are numbered to 599. I think 599, 499. But these are uh, not numbered. But you get this hot box out of Heritage where every pack in the box has one of these purple refractors. Um, which uh, They're not all rookies. It could be any player. But these are still pretty low population. Um, see, um, there's a PSA 10, a little high on the price. Um, but one thing I like is if you look at the uh, the other big guys, you know, Tatis, 365, Acuna, 450, Shohei, 610. Lower population on these ones, so Pop 194, Pop 319, and Pop 449. And then if I take a look at the Vladdy, which I just had pulled up, 
you can see like last sale 250, but actually, I mean, they're trending a little bit higher than that. You're gonna see some ups and downs. Pop 334 on that. Um, so at 120 on a nine, I'd look at around 3X that on the 10. So I'm gonna see if they'll take uh, 300. Will you take 300 on the Vlad? 325 is the best I can do right now. All right, I could do 315. How about 320? And I wouldn't do that, but I have a couple, so. It's a nice card. I have an Acuna PSA 9. I love the hot box refractors. Yeah, they're, they're sweet. Low count, uh, too. Yeah, look, exactly. They're low low pop. Yeah, look, purple obviously looks kind of nice with the, with the Blue Jays, but the, yeah. You know, the reflection, it's, it's, so, it's, it's really subtle. Powerful. Yeah, the 18's got a little bit better color on the purples really than the 9's. I'll do 320 on that with you. Yeah. Cool. Grand Rapids, yeah, what's your name? Robert, my Hey, Robert, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Is it Robert, one of That's our, so one of our awesome, members. Man. Thank you. He's buying the other Vlad. Yeah, I... I uh, happy dealer, happy member, happy... Happy teapot. That's all about. All right, so I'm back here in my room. We just got back from an awesome members event, a happy hour with a bunch of our members, which was really exciting. Had a nice team dinner, and now I just wanted to review some of the cards that I actually was able to pick up at the show today. So one thing I do feel really good about is that I found this Topps Chrome Sapphire Bichette PSA 9, and I paid 300 for this. And what I love about this is that it's the color match. So on the 2020s, they did the blue kind of default as the cracked ice sapphire effect. In 2019, if you see like a Vladimir Guerrero, obviously Blue Jays, it's more of that clear white cracked ice. Still looks amazing, but you gotta love the color match on the blue with the Bichette. When I saw this, I was actually even more ecstatic and excited than if I had found the Topps Chrome, and I paid 300 for this. So if we look at some of the comps on this card, what you can see is that at the in the first week of July, this card sold for around 850, for a PSA 10. The last sale on a PSA 9 on eBay was 280 at the end of June. So again, I paid uh, 300 for this. But uh, the most recent sale of this card was on July 21st for $400 raw. So I felt really good about the PSA 9. Again, I like Bichette. This is right in the area where I was looking to spend around four to $500 on Bichette. So I hit that target. I was able to find this one. It took some dirty work to get to it, but I'm really excited about this Sapphire Beau Bichette. All right, so next up is this Jordan Alvarez uh, PSA 9 Topps Chrome Auto Refractor, number to 499. This is one I feel really good about, and I actually picked this up in a deal uh, with another Mookie Betts card that I'm gonna show you in a little bit. But this one, I got the deal on. The Betts was kind of like up in the air about recent comps, but this Jordan Alvarez, I definitely feel really good about, and let me show you why. So I paid actually 150 for this PSA 9, and the last sale on a PSA 9 was the 1st of, uh, of July for $249. You got a sale on the 20th of July for a PSA 10 of $849, so the multiplier makes me feel really good about that. And then $175, you know, really recently on the 29th of July for $175 raw. So I got a PSA 9 for $150, a raw just sold for $175. Jordan was one of the other guys with Bichette that I said I was targeting this week at the National. I picked up one. That's right where I wanted to be. I didn't want to overcommit into Jordan. I like to diversify in baseball and not overcommit into any one player, but I feel really good about that particular card. All right, next I've got this Manny Machado. Now, I was looking for some Manny Machado, and the reason why, and I talked about it in the video, is his war is high. It's actually higher than Bryce Harper's. It's higher than Nolan Arenado's. Um, he's got a good shot at making the Hall of Fame, and he's having a great season with the Padres. And then when I was walking around and looking for this card, all day the buzz was, Max Scherzer is going to the Padres. That's what my phone alerts kept saying, that it's almost a done deal, rumors are swirling, Scherzer's going to the Padres. It was looking like a World Series championship for the Padres if they got Scherzer. And then obviously we know at the last second, huge curveball, no pun intended, Scherzer and Trey Turner to the Dodgers not looking so promising for the Padres now, but I still believe in Machado who's having a great season. So if we look at this particular card, what I really like about this is I actually paid $100 for that Machado. And if you look over time, back in May, this card was up around $230, and now it's all the way come down to 135 recently. It was marked at 125. Like I said, I paid $100 for this card. That's the low point in the last 90 days. I feel really good about Machado's long-term value. 
and the immediate flip potential if the Padres end up against the Dodgers in the playoffs. All right, next up, one of my favorite players uh, for many years now, Nolan Arenado. I love the guys who are really good defenders, who can hit the ball out of the ballpark and hit for average. This guy does it all. He was killing it with the Rockies. He's having an okay season with the Cardinals. I think Cardinals fans and the Cardinals uh, management certainly were hoping he'd be a little bit better, but he's still got a lot of future ahead of him. And he's higher on the war list too than Bryce Harper. He's a great young talent. And I picked this card up for $100. The guy had it marked at 110. You know, I, I asked, asked him if he'd take 100, which I thought was pretty reasonable, and he accepted my offer. It's a PSA 9, a Topps Chrome Refractor rookie card. And another thing that I really like about this card, again, is if you look at the recent comps, 120 was the most recent sale on the 27th of July. And this card was as high when, you know, I think when he originally got traded, it was as high as $240. So Nolan Arenado is a guy I like for the long term, and I really like the price that I would pay for it. Okay, and last but not least, Kevin Durant. I mentioned him in last week's video. Honestly, I should probably be scooping up even more Kevin Durant cards. This is an absolute buy right now. Durant is not going to go down. Even if Kevin Durant, if something terrible happened, and I'm, I'm gonna knock on wood or knock on tile, something terrible happened to Kevin Durant, like Carson Wentz getting injured, potentially out for the season in practice before the season. This guy's career and his legacy is solidified. I can hold this card for the long term. And what I really like about this card is that I got an absolute steal on this card. I'm gonna show you the chart and tell you what I paid for this card. So the most recent sale, $315. That's actually what I paid for this Durant at the show, $315. And you can see over the last 180 days, that is the absolute rock bottom low point. It was going for $450. 180 days ago and the high point on this card single sale single day high point $1,090 so I know there's been some questions in the comments about you know looking at a single day a high average even if you were to look at the median over several days over a month you can't debate that this was a really good deal on the Durant these are sneaky plays they've got that awesome vintage look I really like these retro Durants this is the third one I've picked up in the last week of Kevin Durant, a few different cards. Really, really, really happy about this card. All right, so I just wanna highlight a few more pickups that I made this week in addition to those five that I showed you the charts for. Quick hitter style, but I'm really excited about these pickups as well. So the first one is this Mookie Betts Red Hot Foil, and this is his rookie debut. And I picked it up in a PSA 9. Population on these is relatively low. Obviously the rookie debut isn't as sought after as the actual base rookie card, this card I picked up for $300. There's seen a lot of volatility. The last PSA 9 did around 293, I think about a month and a half, two months ago. The PSA 10 was as high as 1,000 shortly after that in June. Recently on an auction on eBay, a PSA 10 did around five, 550, something along those lines. So I was looking at this one kind of debating, but I really like Mookie Betts. I'm a sucker for color match. This card is super sharp in hand. They don't make these red hot foils anymore in Topps product. So I was excited about this one. Like I said, it's relatively low pop and I'm holding Mookie for the long term. He's got a great shot at the Hall of Fame. He's already way up on the war list. He's basically been considered trout light for a number of years. He's won a championship with two teams and the Dodgers just loaded up. It's looking like a possible third World Series for this guy. So I'm not worried about a down season for Mookie Betts. He's got a lot of life in him left in his career. All right, so next up is this Vladimir Guerrero Jr. And Vladdy's not a guy I had necessarily on my target list this week. His stuff has already been going up progressively this season. He and Shohei have been absolutely dominating. But when I came across this card, it caught my eye. And these hot box refractors, as they're called, or purple refractors out of Heritage, are sneaky plays in my opinion. If you're not familiar with them, the hot box refractors come in what, what uh, Topps calls a hot box, which is like one per case where every pack in the box has one of these purple refractors and they're super sharp looking. The 2019s don't look as nice as the 2018s or the 2020s in my opinion. The purple's a little muted, but a PSA 10, and I actually paid at 320 for this, so we've got 350 on the price tag. I paid 320, and the reason I was okay with this price is that the others, if you look at Tatis, if you look at Shohei, um, if you look at Acuna, the prices are all higher than Vladdy, and the pop counts are really similar. Slightly higher on the Vladdy than the other three guys, I believe, 
but I was looking at this card and actually we had, you saw it, a Market Movers member at the same booth who was looking at the same exact card. And the guy pulls out another and says, I have two of them. So our Market Movers member bought the other one for the same price, 320. So I think we both felt really good about this. I'm really excited to see what Vladdy can continue to do this season. It's gonna be a dog fight to the finish between him and Otani for the MVP award. And uh, obviously this guy's got a big, bright future ahead of him. All right, so after Jeff had uh, Doug and I going out and doing the Aoki challenge for, uh, for a hot Japanese athlete, a great gift for Aoki, I realized I need to get myself an Ichiro card. I was on the floor looking around and I came across this one, which is his 2001 Bowman Draft Picks, PSA 9. Uh, they had it marked at 150. I talked him down to 120. You know, this card's comps have seen it around $100. I may have overpaid for this slightly, but with Ichiro, it felt like, you know, kind of how can you go wrong? There was an opportunity to pick one up in cash on the floor. And this is gonna be a long-term hold for me. You know, with baseball, you can go for the Hall of Famers and hold them for the long term. I've got some Pujols, I've got some Verlander, I've got some Miguel Cabrera. This is another guy that I wanted to add to my portfolio for the more blue chip long-term hold. So I was okay, slightly overpaying for what I've seen on recent eBay comps in the down market. Feel really good about this each row card. All right, so next is this Luka Doncic uh, PSA 9 Select Concourse as rookie card from 2018. I actually picked up two of these and I bought one at 150, which is this one that I found on the show floor. And then I bought another at 175 at the trade night. These have been comping recently in a down market again at around 200 to $225. So I felt really good about this one. This is one of the ones that I felt like was kind of a steal. I came to the show thinking if I could find Luca, especially select or some optic stuff at a good price, I'd be picking up Luca. I think his stuff's gonna surge again next year. He is the future of the NBA. I ran a poll on Instagram asking kind of in almost like bracket style March Madness, like pairing players against each other. If you were starting an NBA franchise, which player would you want to pick first overall? And it came down to Luca and Giannis. And this was before Giannis won the championship. I don't think the result would have necessarily differed, but overwhelmingly 93% to 7% on, I don't know, like 75 to 80 votes. Everybody chose Luca. That was the number one pick of anybody from the last 10 years draft picks. So I feel really good about Luca. You know, he's got a great bright future ahead of him. And I've got a PSA 9 Prism at home that I might swap out and sell and keep the two select concourse nines. All right, so next up, DeAndre Hopkins. You know, the NFC West is absolutely loaded this year. I mean, I'm personally rooting for the Rams and Hammer on our team is a big Rams fan. I love Matty Stafford. I was happy and almost relieved for him to see him go to the Rams, a team like that. He's got an awesome defense behind him, which he's only had really one time in his career when the Lions had a great shot a few years ago. But um, DeAndre Hopkins is the number one weapon of Kyler Murray in Arizona. And you know they've got a great shot in that division as well, in my opinion. Kyler Murray is one of the biggest, bright, young, upcoming stars in terms of quarterbacks. This is a pop two, serial numbered to 99 Spectra. And one thing I've noticed is that Spectra is actually a little more popular amongst football collectors than it is basketball for some reason. You see that kind of difference between two sports. But this card's actually the silver, it's super sharp in hand and pop two, and I got this for $175. The prism silvers for Hopkins, which are low population, the PSA 9s are like pop 11, the pop, the PSA 10s, I'm, I'm not quite sure what the exact pop is, but it's not high. Those are going the PSA 9s around like, you know, high 200s. So 175 on the Spectra, very low population. This is a set that I think has opportunity to grow. Just, I mean, absolutely beautiful card in hand. Felt really good about picking this up going into next season. All right, last but not least, Tracy McGrady. I picked up this Flare Row 2 PSA 9. I just saw this in a bin, 20 bucks. Kobe Bryant said Tracy McGrady was one of the toughest, if not the toughest players he ever had to guard. I love Tracy McGrady. I'm gonna do an episode upcoming on the biggest what if players and McGrady is gonna be on that list for sure. I love this card and I loved T-Mac when I was growing up. Now as always, obviously you've seen, I was out on the floor using the Market Movers app. It was a massive help, even with the kind of service interruptions in the National and the Convention Center. A lot of people trying to use their phones and it was really encouraging to see how many other users were walking up and saying, one, hey, we love Market Movers, we love what you're doing and I'm super appreciative of that and then also just seeing people actively using market movers. I even had an opportunity to walk up to a guy who was trying to figure out what a card was worth, pull it up on my phone and just say, here you go man, 800 bucks, and he felt good about the transaction he was making. So 
If you like this video, let me know if you were at the National. If you spotted me, say hello in the comments, and I hope that you'll like this video. Make sure to subscribe. I'm gonna keep this content coming and hit the bell icon so that you can always be notified. And if you are interested in market movers, download the app for free on the Apple Store or Android, or you can go to marketmoversapp.com and find out more about our full suite of features. Thanks as always, and I'll see you next time.